Hey everybody, Joe Joseph here for thedailysheeple.com and this is your new shot. Let's go to arstechnica.com. It being Freaky Friday, I thought it'd be pretty cool with this Bitcoin craze going on to go over the insane energy consumption of Bitcoin. A lot of people don't realize that Bitcoin come at an enormous cost. Who knew? I didn't even know. But they, there's estimates out there that say that Bitcoin net, the Bitcoin network itself consumes as much energy as the nation state of Denmark. I mean, that's crazy when you think about it. It says the skyrocketing value of Bitcoin is leading to a soaring energy consumption issue. According to one widely cited website that tracks the subject, the Bitcoin network is consuming power at an annual rate, get this, of 32 terawatt hours, about as much as Denmark. By the site's calculation, each Bitcoin transaction consumes 250 kilowatt hours or about as much power as it takes to power homes for nine days. Now, of course, if you're thinking about this in terms of a sustainability problem, you're probably, you're probably right. I mean, this could be a scary thing to look at when you look at the current growth rates of Bitcoin. According to uh, Eric Holthaus, who's a writer for Grist, he says um, that the Bitcoin network will, quote, use as much electricity as the entire world does today by early 2020. Wow. That's a pretty unsustainable trajectory. Here we are thinking, right, that, or at least they're trying to make it look like, oh, God, global warming. It's going to be like air conditioners that are going to be uh, sucking all the power up, right? Because it's going to get so hot. No, it's not. It's Bitcoin. Who the hell knew? This global energy production obviously can't double within two years and to be an environmental disaster if it did. You know, this is funny because Bitcoin is supposed to be this, uh, this savior, if you will, uh, or alternative to the central banking syndicate, which is great. Don't get me wrong. Wonderful that there's a free market alternative. Who Ross is Kumba. But it's almost akin to like the Toyota Prius. Here's a Toyota Prius, the first real hybrid that comes out and even these electric cars and they say oh this is so green it's good for the environment and everything else the problem with these electric cars and the problem with the prius and i'm all for it don't get me wrong is how the lithium and the cobalt used in their batteries are mined what that does to the environment take a look at some of these rare earth mines and look around them. It is a cesspool of death and destruction. It's horrible. And then once they go bad, what do you do with them? Because what I'm coming to find out is they're burying these batteries oftentimes because they, they don't recycle after a certain amount of time. Then they bury them. Very toxic, lithium. So they're really not that green. Oh, they may be as far as like, okay, you use electricity, yeah, 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 you know. But disposal? Who the hell thinks about disposal? It's very interesting how these kind of parallel each other in that regard. Now, Bitcoin's energy consumption won't necessarily march steadily upward. Indeed, Bitcoin's energy consumption is designed to fall in the long run. And Bitcoin's energy consumption isn't tied to the number of transactions the network handles. That means that increasing the use of the network won't necessarily impose a higher environmental cost. So it's really during the mining process that most of this takes place. It says here, Bitcoin mining, the process that generates new Bitcoin while maintaining the network's shared transaction letter, ledger is a secret of global industry. No one knows exactly how much energy it consumes. However, we can make some educated guesses. So for starters, we know that the industry, we know the industry's revenue. Bitcoin miners currently generate about 75 Bitcoin per hour, which at the current price, of around 12,500, it's actually like 17,000 now per Bitcoin. That translates to $937,500 per hour or more than $8 billion per year. And it says, moreover, the industry is highly competitive and electricity is one of your biggest costs. So when the price of Bitcoin rises, we can expect miners to spend more and more on electricity units or electricity until electric, electricity costs are roughly on par with revenue. Now, a lot of people, of course, don't 
realize high energy costs. Uh, countries like Venezuela, where you have state run electricity, even in a depression, you're still talking about dirt cheap electricity because it's all state run. So a lot of people are circumventing this depression by buying a mining setup and uh, mining Bitcoin. And it's actually benefiting a lot of people. Now you come here to the United States where we don't have state owned power or regulated power and you can pay a lot of money. So, I mean, you're thinking about, you know, some of these Bitcoin rigs <clears throat> have like 10,000 watt power supplies. That's a lot of power that you're running all the time. You know, like a whole house full of power, which if you live in a rural community, you're going to be paying upwards of $500 a month just to, in power just to run your Bitcoin rig. So, I mean, again, it all depends on what place you live as well. But I've just found it staggering. 32 terawatts of power to mine Bitcoin as it stands right now. As much as the country of Denmark. Who the hell knew? Just some of that useful, useful, useless information out there on this Freaky Friday. Yeah, thank you for supporting the DailySheeple.com. And uh, have a great weekend and I'll see you all next week. Hashtag wake the flock up. Have a great day, everybody.